What do you put in your beekeeper's toolbox? All of this stuff on the table, as well as much more, will fit into a reasonable size portable toolbox. I'm going to take you through the building of a small portable toolbox, show you how everything will fit, and then show you the final product. Please remember to like and subscribe. We're going to start by cutting a piece for the bottom and a piece for each side and a piece for each end of the box. We'll then put glue and pre-drill holes for the screws and screw each of the four sides together and attach to the bottom. With a couple of pieces of scrap, we'll cut them to length to make one shelf on the inside. To mark the lower edge of the board so that I'll know where to pre-drill the holes. Once I have the shelf to the desired size and have the screws in the back, I'll affix the front now of the tray. Now that the tray is attached, we'll cut grooves on the side to locate the frame hanger so that it will be flush with the top. Now that we have the frame hanger attached, flush mounted to the top, we will move on to the additional pieces of beekeepers. Tool. Again, using scrap wood, we're going to build a small shelf or tray for queen cages. The tray for the queen cages will hold about half a dozen or so, possibly a few more, a few less. Now I'll drill a hole for the homemade queen marking cage that I made. Take a scrap piece of board now and make a holder for the wax capping so tool. So now we have a place to store our capping tool. And now we'll move on to the next section of the tool. You never know when you'll need rubber bands. So we're going to make a spot here on this end of the box with some dowel rods. A bit of glue for each. And just like that, we now have a place to keep our rubber bands. So we will move on to our next level to learn what we're going to do with our beekeeper's toolbox. So with another scrap of wood, we'll make a place on the side of our box to place our bee brush and we'll cover it with something similar to we'll this. We'll apply a little glue and secure this in place for placement of our brush. And then we'll move on to the next part. So this is what we have for brush storage. Yes, you're going to think I'm nuts, but we will need a place to put our one quarter teaspoon measuring okay. spoon. So we now have a place for our quarter teaspoon and we'll move on to the next portion of the beekeeper toolbox. For my oldest son learned I was going to get into beekeeping. He bought this rather unusual looking hive tool for me. So we're going to find a place to locate it on the side of the box here. All right, so after we cut a hole so that the hive tool will sit flush in the top, and we use chisels and a drill to drill a hole so that the wing nut will actually go into the side of the box. We'll place the hive tool 
and then we'll actually place a screw here to hold it in place. Okay, so this is what we have now on this side of our toolbox. It's a place to keep this special hive tool. I have a couple of scrap drawers I'm gonna disassemble and make a place for keeping gloves. The boxes, and then we'll cut this to fit and we'll put the gloves in the bottom corner of our toolbox. So now we have a place to keep a pair of gloves and an old towel. Everything's in its place and easily accessible. Should have drilled these holes earlier, but we'll put some magnets here using uh, 10 minute epoxy and we'll have those magnetically attached to the inside Get of the these glued in and we'll have places for our traps, our queen traps. So on this end, we will make a place to affix our smoker. And we will probably put a strap around it to hold it in place there. Now I need to make a base for the smoker. So we'll cut some pieces of scrap wood about four and three quarter wide for the base to set the smoke. Now that we have this assembled, we will fasten it to the front of the toolbox as the base for the smoker and then move on to the next step. Now that we have this in place, secured from the bottom, we'll go ahead and insert a couple of screws here and here on the inside so that it will stay in place. A piece of rod and a couple of deadbolt hooks to make sure that we have something to securely keep our smoker in place. With the smoker in place and the bellows slightly compressed, we will locate the attachment points for a bar that will hold the smoker against the toolbox. So, with the last screw in place, we'll see how easy it is to place the smoker onto the toolbox. And just like that, we now move on to the next section of the beekeeper toolbox. Out of additional scrap wood, I've cut pieces for each side of the lid and each end of a lid that's approximately two and three eighths inches deep that exactly fits the top of the After tool. cutting the frame of the lid to fit, we then cut the top, exact width of the piece of shelving board, one by 12, and the length of the overall toolbox. We're going to hinge the toolbox on this end near the smoker. In the event that we want to reach in while the smoker is still hot, we don't have to worry about burning our arms or our hands. And we'll be centering the hasp so that we can close our toolbox for transportation on this end in the center of the lid opposite the end of the smoker. Now in the lid, I'm going to make a place for the staple and we will make a spot for some extra screen. So we'll fasten these two to the lid. Just as I did the trays in the center of the toolbox, I just arranged the top of the toolbox so that things that I would need to get to are easily accessible. I have screen wire, traps for small hive beetle, staple for the screen wire, pens, marking paint, cigarette lighter for starting the smoker. And by the way, that's what the can here is in the middle is smoker fuel. I use the hardwood from my planer. We'll move on to the next step. This is what the final product looks like. No, I 
don't take all of this out to my hives. My hives are less than 100 yards from my basement back door. But just so you can have an idea of what it would hold if you needed to put it in there.